Feel brand new. Feel brand new. Feel brand new. Me and my crew. Feel brand new. Feel brand new. So we feel brand new. Me and my crew. What's up guys, this is Kazi. Welcome to probably the most anticipated video on this channel, how to color grade a wedding footage. And one thing that you need to know about wedding videos is there's never a budget for it, okay? And the timelines are so tight that you will never be able to fit it in. Third, it's usually shot in a naturally lit environment, which is really hard to grade. Now on the flip side, if you have a well-graded wedding video, you set yourself apart. You can charge your clients so much more than your competition. Now I'm gonna give you some pro tips, but I split them up in macro and micro. So let's start with macro. So what you need to do is create a global grade, basically where you are grading in a way where you can just copy paste your entire grade and then go in and make micro adjustments. Okay, so that's very, very important. Two, do the opposite for the hero shots. In a wedding, you will have 10, 15, 20 hand-picked shots. So those you can actually give a ton of love to, okay? You can just go in and, you know, pick skin and, you know, isolate things, do a lot of hue versus hue, whatever you have to do to really make it stand out. And another great thing about that is, when you're cutting your wedding reel, you can easily just bring the hero shots and not even worry about anything else. So basically you're doing yourself a favor. Now let's get into the micro tips, okay? So number one, bright, bright, bright. I mean, come on, it's all about the bright, right? So skin tones, basically. Skin tones are the most important thing in a wedding video. It doesn't matter, build your grades around that and then let everything else be the secondary. Number two, color separation or color isolation. I mean, they sound pretty confusing. It almost sounds like the same thing, but let me explain. Color separation will be where you will create color contrast, like pull them apart if you can. Color isolation will be where you get the crisp white look, where you just pull everything else and you just like, you know, put the skin tones where they're supposed to be. If there's foliage or something in the shot, like let that green like shine. And then that's about it. So that's what I mean by that. Number three, neutral whites and blacks. Why am I saying that? Usually the dude is wearing a tux and the girl is wearing a white dress. So it's really important to have neutral whites and neutral blacks. Then your hero in the shot, your girl or the dude is gonna look perfect. And then you can play around with all the mid-tones in the middle if you wanna get creative. Number four, high key. That is probably a requirement on a wedding video. What that means is the skin needs to look flawless. And when you do a high key look, you just hide tons of blemishes or imperfections in the skin. So it really helps you out on a global scale. Number five, you gotta make it look dreamy. I'm gonna show you some exclusive tips in this tutorial that I haven't shown on this channel and it's gonna blow your freaking mind. So are you guys pumped? Are you guys ready? Guys, before we even jump into this tutorial, two days left to sign up for my masterclass. Now, why do I keep pushing that to you guys? Let's just take a second and talk about it. IG posts are not stopping. Those value bombs, I'm gonna be dropping there, okay? YouTube videos are not stopping. I'm gonna be putting out one video a week minimum. That's not stopping. The problem with these compared to my masterclass is that Masterclass is tailor-made, it has a roadmap. It takes you from start to finish, and that's something you cannot get with these. You pick up a few tips here, a few tips there, but it's not a wholesome thing. Whereas the Masterclass is taking you from not knowing anything to becoming a six-figure if you want to, and if you have the hustle and the drive, and if you follow my footsteps, you can become a very profitable filmmaker, not just a colorist. So two days left, and let's check out what's in the course. 25 plus hours worth of content, 150 plus training videos, access to over 100 gigs worth of professionally shot log footage, invitation to a mastermind group where we hold weekly competitions, and I'm talking about two hour group session where I go through everyone's grade and break it down and give you personalized feedback. The courses consist of nine total modules as of today, and I'm gonna be adding another one very soon. And the way it's laid out, it's perfect for somebody who knows nothing about Resolve to maybe somebody who's intermediate but really wanna take their game to the next level. The goal with this masterclass is very simple. I want you to learn in weeks what took me years to learn. I'm so confident that I'm throwing in a hassle-free 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Join thousands of members that are part of FCM culture and have achieved unimaginable results. Enrollment ends soon. Join now. The link is in the description or in the comments below. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm dropping value bombs there every single day. Let's roll the intro.
right, so here's the shot that we're working with. I'm gonna play it through a couple of times and then we're gonna come up with the game plan. Okay, so I'm gonna park it on my hero frame, which is this right here. This footage along with the project file and my node tree is gonna be available to my masterclass members. And guys, this beautiful footage came from Josh Kid Films. Check it out. If you guys are in the wedding business, definitely follow his page. His content is fire. Let's get right into the tutorial. So one thing that I can tell you right now, just by looking at the scopes, we have lost our highlights, meaning we can try to pull it back, but it's going to be artificial. It's not there. And that's totally fine because we got to make these choices. I mentioned that you're mostly shooting in, in natural lighting conditions, which means not so ideal conditions. So you have to make some sacrifices. So here, bride over the exposure in the background. That said, I'm still gonna show you some techniques to control your highlights, okay? Let's start building this puppy up. So first is gonna be our exposure as always. Then I'm gonna build my second node. Let's start naming them. So this is exposure. The second node is gonna be my base. And this is where I'm gonna do my white balance and stuff. And then this one is gonna be my look. Then I'm gonna make a parallel, which is gonna be my skin right here. I'm gonna make another parallel. And then this is where we're gonna do our highlights. And then we're gonna create another node. And this is gonna be our high key. And I'm gonna make another serial. And this one is going to be our vignette. Then we're gonna make another one. And this is gonna be our soften glow and final grain grain is going to be take it or leave it it's going to be up to your preference so this is the node tree okay again we're thinking about on a global scale we want to build a node tree that we can apply on the entire thing and then go make micro adjustments but like i said if you're working on a hero shot like this shot you can do the extracurricular and grab her skin and just give her more love okay I'm not gonna be doing that in this one because the way I'm gonna build this, you guys are gonna see what I'm talking about, okay? We're gonna be able to do most of it in this grade. The first thing I wanna do is click on my exposure and start with the contrast and pivot. And just be careful, don't go too far with it because we kinda wanna have a gentle contrast. I'm gonna park it somewhere around here. I'm gonna start raising my gamma. I'm basically focusing right here. I wanna bring more detail out in her face and then I wanna bring my gain down and pop my gamma up. Now I'm gonna take my lift and bring it down to add some more detail. And then I'm gonna keep playing between the lift and gamma, okay? I'm gonna be simultaneously moving it to just get in a place where I'm happy. So something like that. So now we just look at it, right? So much detail in her face, her hair, everything that we need to see. The black points are looking pretty good. I'm can, I can bring it down a little bit. So I'm using my lift, just brought it down a little bit. We can still see the detail outside and that's what's important, right? So, I mean, we're looking really good for our first exposure node. Now for the base, I'm gonna tell you this, use your temperature and tint control. Trust me, when you're working on a wedding and you wanna just turn and burn, this control is really gonna come in handy and just look what happens. I'm gonna start with my temperature and pull it back. I'm just trying to, I'm looking at her dress right now, right here. I'm trying to get the whites in the right place, something like that. And now I'm gonna go and just get some of that green out. And for that, I'm looking at the dress, also at the lamp. Go too far and then pull it back as always. So something like that, right? This is looking pretty good. So this is where we started. And then this is where we ended up and it's looking pretty crisp, right? So I'm gonna park it here somewhere for now. So this is looking pretty good. Let's give it some saturation. So I'm gonna crank it up to 65-ish. Okay. So that's not bad at all. We're really good. I mean, we got our whites. The skin is looking really good. The hair is looking really good. Everything is looking like it belongs, right? I mean, one thing that I can do is try to get some of that green out. So I'm gonna just start adding more in my tint. I'm gonna add more magenta and then dial it back, obviously. Don't wanna overdo it. 
go too far with my temperature and pull it back again. Again, I'm just looking at her dress. Um, looking at all the white points and it's looking really good. I mean, just look at it. So before and after, like how much detail you can get just by doing a base grade, just by color correcting. And that's another very important thing when you're working on wedding videos that you will be surprised how much you can pull out just by adding some saturation like we did. Now, don't you think this is before, this is after. If you were to just park it here and send it out, your client is going to be stoked. I'm seeing some blue in the highlights, so I want to pull that out. So I'm going to control that a little bit. All right, so for now, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go under my look, and what we're going to do here is start creating some interest. Remember color separation? So right now, my focus is right here and then the skin. How far can I pull these two? So I'm going to start with my lift. I'm going to pull my lift down. Keep pulling it down and I'm just focusing on that color right now. And then I'm going to take my gamma and start lifting it up to counter it. And now my focus is just really on the skin right now. And then what I'm going to do is just take my gain and kind of move it in that direction a little bit, not too much. Again, focuses on the skin. At this point, I'm just messing with my lift a little bit. and. Now what I want to do to get my black points right, I'm going to go into my log wheels and I'm going to start raising it up just so until we have our black points where they're supposed to be. And obviously I'm using this as my anchor right now. So if I do before, look at this, and then after, our black points are looking really, really good. Okay. And then I'm going to go in my low range and I'm just basically focusing right here and I want to give her some detail in her eye back. So I'm just going to go back and even something like this barely touched it so it looks like we didn't do much but there was some separation that we were able to create but let's just push it a little bit more why not so i'm going to go up and over up and then i'm going to pull it down like such then i'm going to take my gain and kind of start injecting a little bit of look, but not too much. I'm just basically keeping it in a happy place, like a warm sort of thing, but not like overdoing it. So this is before, this is after, right? So it's just making it a little bit livelier. And then my black points are looking good, but I'm just going to adjust it a little bit more. So this is looking way better. So just look at, we're starting to pull a lot of separation. I mean, look at her skin in the back. Look at the dress now. See, so there was still so much teal in there and we pulled it and look at how deep the skin has gotten and the hair. This is the kind of separation I'm talking about, right? So we're really pulling her out from the background and even just look at the teal in here that's embedded and we're pulling that out. And one thing that I want to do is... Um, I can go in my gamma and kind of try to get some of this yellow out. So I'm going to pull it down and over something like that. And I think it's cool to have a crisp grade, you know, like where we're headed right now. And then I'm going to counter it with a little bit more warmth by my gain. So I'm pulling it in there to the left to kind of add more warmth, not too much. So just by using our primaries, look at how much separation we created, okay? Just look at her dress before, look at her dress after. Look at her skin, how rich her skin is now. Compared to before, same thing with her hair. The amount of separation that we created. Even just look at this to that. Like how it was a wash before, to how much detail that we're creating, and then the black points. So you might have to spend an additional minute or two when you're creating this because again this is a global look and then once you have it dialed in you can really just throw it on and just you know keep chugging along and then in here for my skin all i have to do or want to do is go under my hue versus saturation i'm going to click on my red and i'm going to pop it up and just look at how much it brings her out and again creating that separation from the background 
And then I'm gonna go under my hue versus luminance. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull her up a little bit, not too much. And just look how much it cleans her up. Okay, maybe I'll bring it down a little bit, split the difference, something like that. See how much it's cleaning her up? It's kind of crazy how much of a difference we made just by these two. And that's really what I want to do here. Like, look at her skin. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, just keep these clean. Don't get too crazy with them. And uh, you're going to end up with a really amazing look. Then for high key, I'm going to do the tried and tested. I'm going to click on editable splines. I'm going to click on the top. And then I'm going to raise it. Guys, my focus is her, okay? I don't care about anything else. So let's just focus on her. And then we're going to work everything around our bride. And I'm just going to start raising it. This is a high key look. Like where does she look just perfect? Like this is looking really good. Just look at her. Okay. Maybe hold on. Let me just do something. I'll bring it here, raise it, go too far, and then pull it down. So something like that. She's looking really good. Now, what we have done is that we've blown out the background quite a bit, right? And even like we're losing some of the detail here. So this is where the highlights come into play. That's why I created it, but I kind of reserved it, you know, to use after we do the high key. So that's a really important step to remember. Now I'm going to go under my qualifier, and this is the cleanest qualifier you can pull. I talked about it many times. I'm going to hit Shift H so you guys can see what I'm selecting. Definitely don't want to select her skin. So I'm going to select this. And then I'm just going to go under my highlights and pull it back. Not too much, okay? I just want to go, I'm going to go too far first, then I'm going to come back to something like that. And now I want to move this over to see when we grab all the areas that we want to grab. Okay, so this is what I want to grab. So this is looking really good, right? Because look at how we were losing detail here and we brought it back. Look at how we were losing detail on her dress and we were bringing that back. So that is good, but it's kind of looking muddy. So let's put that detail back in, but now we get to control how much detail we put back in. So I'm going to go in here in my log wheels. I'm going to take my highlights. I'm going to raise it. And basically, I'm just looking at her dress to give her that pop back. And now we're getting that pop back into her dress. And that's all we wanted to do. Now I'm going to go under my vignette. And I'm going to create a vignette like this. Nothing too crazy. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. I'm going to bring it in a little bit like that. And I'm going to soften the F out of it. Okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to soften it. Like I'm going to keep going to about like here and i'm going to invert it then i'm going to go right in here to my curves i'm going to grab it actually go in here turn off editable splines grab it from here and start pulling it back i want to do a realistic change okay i don't want to go too far so how do you do realistic change i'm looking at right here and i want to make sure that this highlight doesn't get muddy if i go here look it's getting really weird so i don't want that I'm going to go to that point and I'm going to park. Look at how much of a difference it's making, but it's just making everything richer and creating that color separation. Look at how much color we're bringing back in and then it's complementing her skin. This is what I'm talking about, about the color separation, okay? And it's these little steps. And then under soften, I'm going to go click on the second tab. I'm going to go under my midtone detail and the actual sauce is negative 30. Okay. When you have women in the shot, but for wedding, you can just leave it at 30 for the whole thing. And it does a really nice thing and it's perfect for the wedding. Okay. If somebody's freaking out, they're just like, dude, why are you applying it to the whole thing? Because it's really nice. It's not like making the entire image mush. Like, look at the algorithms are perfect. If I do a playback, it looks really, really clean, okay? You can dial it back a little bit if you want to. I don't. I mean, for weddings, I mean, girls want to see themselves looking perfect and just look at what it's doing to her skin and how much it's just cleaning her up. Like, this is before, this is after. I mean, she looks flawless. Her makeup is perfect. But with this, 
it just makes it that much better, okay? It evens out the skin and everything. Now I'm gonna go under glow and I'm about to show you something you haven't seen yet. So I'm gonna type in glow, pop that on here, and this looks absolutely garbage. We're not doing that. I'm gonna go under my composite type. I'm gonna turn on soft light and now it's making it too dark. That's okay. I'm gonna take my threshold all the way back and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my brightness and pull it back, pull it back until it looks fine. Like basically right now I'm looking at her eye right here. This is my focus and I want to pull that out. Something like that. Now I want to go under my spread and control it. Again, uh, just focus on the eyes. We're just focusing on the eyes. We want to pull that out. So if I take it to the right, it evens out her skin. She looks really good. So I'm going to park it somewhere around here. Now I'm going to go back in my brightness and start playing with it. Back. Something like this. And now I'm going to go under my global blend and control it. How much I want to add this in. So if I do before and after, it does a really nice thing. But let's just bring the spread back a little bit. So we have a little bit of a stronger effect and look at how much her eyes are popping like i love this effect and now we can just i mean i want to leave it like this to be honest but you can go back and kind of split the difference right so let's just say if we don't want to want it 100 percent, we can just do something like this i'm actually going to dial it back a little bit because i want more of it so this is where we're going to park it before and after, like look at how much it's bringing out her eyes and hair. And then in this one, we're going to do the grain. But again, you don't have to if you don't want to. I want to. You guys know me by now. 35 millimeter, 400 T. Pop these puppies up. Bring it closer. And if I just go and look at the grain right here, if I do before and after, just makes it look like film. And... Uh, this is what we got. So I can park it here. And uh, let's kill everything and start to finish. Let's see where we started to where we ended up. Okay, so this is our image in log. Started with our exposure. And we thought this was looking so good. Remember when I was like, man, this is looking so good. Then we did our base and it actually started looking really good. And we can still see some magenta and the highlights and everything. Then we went into our look and we covered that. We brought all of that back and started creating tons of separation and just look at what we did here, skin to the you know dress, all of that. We started working on it. Then we popped the skin so much just by our hue versus options. Just look at that. Then we went into our high key look and really popped her out and we Blew out the background, but again, like I said, this detail is not going to win you an Oscar for, you know, your 13 stops of dynamic range. So she's way more important. So then we, I went into my highlights and brought tons of detail back. Okay. So we went back and brought as much as we could back. And then um, one thing that I'm noticing now that I'm bringing the detail back is that I want to pull some of this magenta out. So I'm just going to go into my log wheels. And in my highlights, I'm just going to counter that. See? Done. Like just something like that. I just want to pull that magenta out. And I just did that. And then I'm going to go under my vignette. And we created a vignette. And just look at what a nice job it did. And just created so much more color separation. And I can actually split the difference. I can actually pull it up a little bit. So it's subtle. Pull it up a little bit more. So it's way more subtle now. Then we subtracted midtone detail to negative 30. Just made her look like an angel. And then in my glow, I showed you a really cool technique. And just look at how much her skin is glowing. The whole image is glowing, but it looks perfect. It does not look cheap at all. And then topped it off with our favorite thing, grain. And let's check out the final look in full screen. Feel brand new. Feel brand new. Me and my crew. Now the goal from this was pretty straightforward and very simple. I want you to take this method and apply it to your next wedding video, okay? Because everything that I'm dropping here is all practical information. 
And guys, before we leave, two days left to sign up for the masterclass. Link is in the description below. So smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you in the next video.